before we uh, start discussing uh, bleeding disorders, uh, you all uh, need to know that uh, there are three processes that halt bleeding. First process is whenever there's injury, uh, there will be vasoconstriction. The second uh, step or the second process that halt bleeding or stop bleeding is a, a formation of a platelet lung. And the third step is coagulation cascade. So vasoconstriction, vasoconstriction and gap plugging and platelet, uh, sorry, vasoconstriction, uh, platelet aggregation and coagulation cascade, clotting factors. So these three processes are important for to stop any kind of bleeding. So if there's defect in the blood vessels, bleeding will not be stopped. If there's defect with the platelets, either underproduction of platelets or destruction of the platelets, then again, a person will develop a bleeding disorder. And also if there is any problem with the clotting factors, then again, the person will develop a bleeding disorder. So what are the conditions that can lead to vascular defects? So remember that connective tissue diseases such as Ehlers-Danlos syndrome and Marfan syndrome, uh, they can cause bleeding due to vascular defect and platelet disorder. Now there are two types of platelet disorders. One is in which there is a low production of platelets and platelets are produced in the bone marrow. So if there is problem in the bone marrow, such as bone marrow infiltration uh, due to leukemia or myeloma, aplastic anemia, in which there is failure of the bone marrow, then there will be a low production of the platelets and it will lead to uh, bleeding disorder due to a decreased production of the platelets. And that decreased production can be due to any condition that interferes with the bone marrow function such as aplastic anemia, cytotoxic drugs, radiotherapy, anything that suppresses the bone marrow will lead to decrease platelet production. Now, the platelet disorders uh, can either be due to underproduction of the platelets or it can be either due to excessive destruction of the platelets. So we have discussed that uh, condition in which there is destruction of the platelets and that condition is immune thrombocytopenic purpura or ITP. In ITP, uh, ITP can be primary ITP in which there is a formation of antibodies against platelets after a history of upper respiratory tract infection or uh, other autoimmune diseases uh, such as SLE, CLL, uh, they can also cause uh, destruction of platelets due to formation of antibodies against the platelets. So sir, we'll discuss. Yes. Sir, in ITP, the platelet count will be normal. Only the increased destruction will be there, right? Uh, if there's destruction of platelets, then it means platelet will be low. Reduce. Okay. So reduce platelet count for ITP. Isolated thrombocytopenia isolated thrombocytopenia is ITP. So bleeding disorder uh, can be due to vascular defects such as Ehlers-Danlos syndrome and Marfan syndrome or acquired causes such as dengue and measles, fever and scurvy and heinous skill and purpura. All of them are vascular defects that can lead to bleeding. Uh, we will discuss uh, the genetic conditions or hereditary condition in the genetic chapter and uh, infective causes in the infectious disease chapter. Uh, for here, you can remember Hinnitz, skill and purpura. That is a vascular defect that can cause bleeding. Now, platelet disorders that can lead to bleeding, uh, they include aplastic anemia and leukemia, etc. Uh, we will discuss them with uh, leukemias. Uh, here we will discuss only immune thrombocytopenic purpura. And the third thing uh, which can lead to a bleeding disorder is um, uh, 
problem with the clotting factors such as deficiency of clotting factor 8 clotting factor 9 uh, they are called hemophilia a and b respectively and von willebrand disease in which there is a deficiency of von willebrand factor so it can lead to a bleeding disorder as well so vascular defect platelet disorder and coagulation disorder now how uh, we are going to know that uh, what are the features of a platelet disorder and what are the features of a coagulation disorder? Remember that whenever there's a problem with the platelets, either underproduction or either destruction of the platelets, it will lead to a prolonged bleeding from cuts, bleeding into the skin. Bleeding into the skin will manifest as easy bruising and purpura and bleeding from mucous membrane. So if someone present to you with the bruising or a purpura, and there is bleeding from mucous membrane, such as epistaxis, bleeding from nose, bleeding from gums, menorrhagia, or even hematuria. So if someone is bleeding from a skin or a mucous membrane, then you will suspect a platelet disorder. This is uh, one thing that you need to remember to diagnose a bleeding disorder correctly. If someone is bleeding into skin or if someone is bleeding from mucous membranes, then you will suspect a bleeding disorder. And if someone present to you uh, with a bleeding into the joints or hemarthrosis or bleeding into the muscles, hematoma formation in the muscles, then uh, we'll suspect a coagulation disorder. So superficial bleed such as skin and mucosal bleed, you will suspect platelet disorder and deep bleed into joints and into muscles, you will suspect a coagulation disorder such as hemophilia or von Willebrand disease, etc. Uh, don't forget this point. This is a very important point to make a correct diagnosis of any bleeding disorder easily. So here is a- Sorry, what about the vascular disorder? Will it, will it always be a congenital or there will be acquired conditions? Vascular well? disorders, if, uh, if there are vascular disorders, uh, you will have other hands. In vascular disorder, bleeding from the cuts is increased. And in vascular disorder, there's no deep bleed. Right. Uh, in vascular disorders such as uh, Eller Danlos syndrome and Marfan syndrome, there will be other associated features such as hypermobility of the joints and long cylinder male. There will be some features which, which will help you uh, to diagnose this uh, vascular uh, disorder that had led to bleeding. And the right. patient will present to you with bruising as well. And the acquired causes of vascular defects, heinous skill and purpura, you already know that how to diagnose a case of HSP. What will be the features of HSP? Along with purpura, so purpura is basically a skin bleed. So along with purpura, there is arthritis, abdominal pain, nephropathy, history of upper respiratory tract infection. So similarly, there will be some features which will help you diagnosing uh, the vascular defects that has led to uh, bleeding. Right. So you can say that vascular defect can present similarly as uh, platelet defects will present. That is a superficial bleed in the skin or from the mucous membrane. So there will be differentiating point like uh, Marfan or Allard and Loss syndrome features will yes. be there. Okay. Yes. So uh, this is a simplified version of the coagulation system that uh, this is an extrinsic system and this is an intrinsic system. Extrinsic system start from tissue factor that is uh, clotting factor number three. It uh, along with clotting factor number seven and calcium activates the, so three and seven is equal to 10. So three and seven basically activate factor 10 to factor 10A. 
remember that extrinsic system and intrinsic system, both of them uh, has a common endpoint, and that is both of them lead to activation of factor 10A. And then factor 10A along with factor 5 and calcium and phospholipid, it activates prothrombin, thrombin, and then thrombin convert fibrinogen to fibrin. And this fibrin is just like threads that are placed in the platelet plug to complete the blood clot. 